I'm going to start with, I'm going to try to keep it to five minutes worth of the, the fundamentals of what I tell basically anyone who will listen. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Joe Hage. I'll be your host. Okay. First three questions just before you spend any money on marketing. The first question, I'm doing this quickly. I'll give you all the links. The first question is what's your key consumer insight? And this is not just they want to do things faster. This is a pain point that is so nagging and aggravating that they go home and they're like, damn it, if I could just, what? Because especially in our industry, there's very little that is uh, nice to haves. These are need to haves. It's like, yeah, it'd be nicer if I did something faster or something. But is that going to be enough to, especially in a hospital situation where <clears throat> you have um, an advisory board and you need to qualify a product on the fact that it's clinically better, uh, operationally, it's not going to be too hard to incorporate, and financially, uh, they're going to get on board. So clinical, operational, financial. What is this insight that is going to shake them from what they're doing and be like, I have got to? And if your answer is, well, I don't really have that, I don't really have a great answer for you. I mean, yes, marketing, flashy, videos, social, but if your product value proposition is not tight, you know, you've heard the expression lipstick on a pig. Um, you don't need to be a pig to get little traction. If you're just a me too, it's like, well, I'm already doing that. So what's, you know, you're asking me to switch. Switching behavior is expensive. <clears throat> so what's your key insight? Number two is what's your source of volume? The first time you bought a cell phone, you were entering a new category. It was a new concept. If you, however, have car insurance and they say switch to Geico, you are switching. So the difference between I can either use this scalpel or that scalpel versus robotic surgery, AI, there's a difference in the way you approach your strategy. Number three, most important to me, it kind of brings it all together, your positioning statement. I talk about this at every chance I, I can. To whom, what is the frame of reference that, what is the benefit and what are your supporting claims? And I give you here three examples for me. I wrote this more than 10 years ago to Zachary and Lucas. Okay, so for my children, Joe Hage is the loving parent. That's the frame of reference. That gives you all the love and support you can handle. That's the benefit because I need a supporting statement. He listens to you, nurtures you, and to the best of his ability, gives you what you'll need to become successful members of society. To my chorus, and we just started singing again these last two weeks, I was back with the chorus in, um, we practice in a temple and it's a week and a half ago. It was the first time I hugged a whole bunch of people in a year. It was so great. To Northwest Sound Men's Chorus, Joe Hage is the frame of reference, high energy front row performer that is sure to delight your audience's primary benefit because I've sung barbershop music for years and have emceed a number of shows to rave reviews. Number three, for work. To medical device ma manufacturers and the vendors that serve them, Joe Hage is the frame of reference. Medical device marketing consultant that will increase the quality and quantity of your medical leads because this has since evolved, but because I have a great big group and I've been doing this for 10 years and before then I used to blah, 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 blah. So this is the first. You can find it under, if you go to medical Marcom under start here, this is your first uh, article, uh, something for setups, something for uh, the first three concepts, how to build your website from scratch, and a whole bunch of other things about testimonials, testing, conversion, etc. So medicalmarcom.com, start here. Second, I don't know what the hell else to tell you. I refer to this article all the time. There's an amusing story, but I'm trying to be quick about why it's called, I don't know what the hell else to tell you. But it was a customer service person who was exasperated with my constant questions. And she said, I don't know what the hell else to tell you, which was suboptimal for my user experience. Anyhow, um, people ask me, how can they get attention? How can they get more clients? And I say, here are the 14 things you can do. And you know most of these or all of them. And when I tell you them all, you're gonna be like, is there anything else? And I'm gonna say, 
That's pretty much it. And I don't know what the hell else to tell you because they aren't easy and they aren't cheap. But, you know, we say marketing, you know, let's, how do we this and that? Ultimately, we're talking to human beings and we want to motivate them to stop what they're doing and do something else. So how successful is that with you? Hi, am I interrupting you at a bad time? Yeah, I kind of, you know, it's just like the things that you need you're solving those problems. You need, you know, we ran out of toilet paper. You go get toilet paper. If you're a wash in toilet paper and somebody says, uh, Ms. Friedman, may I speak to you please about your toiletry needs? You're like, I'm good. But if you had no toilet paper, you'd be like, honey, we've got to go get some toilet paper. Um, that's the way it is with interruption marketing. So the point is when it comes time for you to have a toiletry need, what brands are you aware of? just being top of mind, being like, oh, that's right. I do like Charmin because whatever. So what are the things? Word of mouth. These are pretty self-explanatory. Trade shows can be great. They can be expensive. Speaking engagements. Absolutely. If you're an expert in something, try to get on a stage, which is a fine way for me to remind you that 10X, I've set the date. It's May 10th through the 12th. Many of the speakers will be premium folks. Um, and if you'd like to be one, let's talk about it. Especially, I have something called fast rounds. And these are just five minute segments where this is one that I did with Justin. He's a premium member. I'm playing it fast, just so you can see. It's just you and I on stage for five minutes. And I ask you questions. It starts with, Hi, who are you and what do you do? And you tell me. And we have this exchange. Keep it nice and tight to five minutes. And it's a nice video that you can use on your website, as you see Justin is. That's on the low end, but then we can also, for example, have, you know, you speak about something at length. Okay. Brochures to leave behind. Okay, great. Nice collateral, but will they by themselves raise awareness? Probably not. An email. You were asking about email open rates. I don't know specific to the industry, and I could tell you what general open rates are by doing a Google search. And they will tell you it depends from 10 to 20 to 30. You know, it depends. It, everything depends on, you know, is there any email in your inbox that you open 100% of the time? So for me, if I get an email from Beth Hage, I open it. I mean, unless it's obvious like somebody had spoofed her account, but pretty much my life depends on answering Beth. Um, so that's highly relevant, it's personal, and it's anticipated. These are the three things that separate an email from spam. Is it relevant? Is it personal? Is it anticipated? If it's not one of those three things, it's from someone you don't know and about something you don't care, it doesn't matter. So if I'm hankering for the latest from Josue, great, I'll, I'll open it. Um, if it's I'm his colleague and he's asking me where I am on a project, okay. If it's, you know, he writes from time to time and it's about some industry stuff going on in Mexico. I'm like, well, I don't really have a Mexican need right now. So maybe, but I don't. Mm. So when you say, you know, what is a typical open rate? It depends. And I just added uh, Jorg on. He's, um, he's really great about how he does his newsletter for Omnica. Frankly, even the term newsletter is off-putting for me because it's like, oh, that's about you not about me and my needs. For a while, for a year and a half, I faithfully wrote a journey for uh, members of uh, my uh, email list for um, Medical Marcom. And I promised every week I was going to talk about something marketing. I also promised up front, some of them will be good and some of them will suck, but I will deliver it every Wednesday at 8 a.m. And so it was anticipated. And it was personal insofar as I talked about things in a very colloquial way, the way I typically do, and relevant. Well, if you care about marketing things, then yeah, this will be relevant for you. Um, and some of them were this one, how to win new appointments with virtual strangers on LinkedIn. Very important. Most important update of the year. Yes, absolutely. The most successful lead generation strategy ever. Yes. How to get someone to fill in your damn survey. Yes. Some of them, hmm, not so much. Um, but that was a way that, you know, I had great open rates with that and interaction. People would write me and say, this was a really good one. I actually should talk to you about something. Um, I have an example where, you know, for the medical devices group back in the day when the group, um, uh, was vibrant and growing and LinkedIn hadn't fucked it up yet. 
Um, I used to be able to send a message every week, I still can, and it would go out as an email to a quarter million people. And some weeks I would write it and I'd be like, there are no comments, there are no likes, and why am I doing this? I just spent five hours and nothing happened. There were other weeks when I got a random email from some guy in New Zealand who said, I've been following you for years, but what you wrote today really resonated. May I, I paraphrase here, write you a $4,000 check for about two hours of your time? And I said, yes, you may. Um, you just never know. It, 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 you have to just be there and constant and be top of mind and have credibility so that when it comes time to, all of the information I had given was free, free, free. But then every once in a while it converts. Did someone have a comment? Yeah, this is Jorg. I know you. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, I also found that my newsletter, even though you know, I, like I said, it's not uh, it's not a uh, super overcrafted thing, but it's a regular and it supports the other activities. It's not so much a standalone thing. Uh, if somebody talks to me uh, about something one week and then three weeks later they get the newsletter, oh, there's a reminder. Or if someone goes to a website, the website, and then all all of a sudden they see the newsletter a month later or or a week later then they go, oh, okay, that makes another connection. So it's really a touch point that, that's part of a whole, a bigger, a bigger strategy, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you for adding that, York. And, and you do a nice job with that. Uh, it's one of the better ones I've seen. Thank you. Um, anyhow, so the point was, I was consistent. And even now, um, so Anne uh, Della Riva is my virtual assistant. She's the best, the best, professional associate with whom I've ever worked. I'm talking bosses, subordinates, assistants, clients, everything. She, she mothers me, I love her. Um, she does almost every administrative task for me these days. Anything that is repetitive, um, I can give her. In fact, I'll show you, um, I have a, a Dropbox of for my virtual assistant, and I recorded all of the main things that I have to do to support my consultancy, the LinkedIn group, the 10x medical device conference, everything, and anything that is repetitive, she does for me. It's amazing, um, and and it's you know when I first uh, started down the path of getting uh, and uh, pardon me, um, a virtual assistant, I was nervous about it. Um, let's see, I haven't I've, I've, I've taken the leap. It was, this was this one. This was number three. And I hired a gal and I thought I, I couldn't possibly delegate how to lead the medical devices group. That requires me knowing people and interacting and, you know, all these how could this possibly, um, I said, how could she possibly understand what to do? How could I find a good one? How could she answer emails on me, on my behalf? She, she wouldn't. And here's the, the punchline. The punchline is if it takes her 10 hours to do what would have taken me one, it's still worth it because of what I charge hourly versus what I pay. And over time, it's not going to take her 10 hours. It'll take five, four, three, two, and then it'll be like, oh yeah, it's the same thing. So when somebody joins the medical devices group, for example, manage the group. So there are at the moment, 24 people looking to get in. And well, I don't know why Jade wants to join, but here, let's say Espina. It's been a while since I've actually done this. First, I send a message to her. And I have a template. There's a tool called Beef Text. Write that down and download it, where it is a word expander, a short code. And I say ZZ, I think it's it's been a while, WQ. Despina. Thanks for joining the medical devices group. It's largely inactive since LinkedIn no longer supports group messaging. 
Occasionally, I email highlights on this website, action item, reply with your email address if you want industry alerts. These may also interest you. I have supplies, I have a chat room, you can join premium, thanks, and a premium membership includes. I send this, it shows up with this, and this person that I have no idea who they are, I just let them into my group and gave them a half dozen links about me. And does it convert hugely? I don't know. Yes, I could measure it. Um, but the fact is that she does that for me thousands of times. One thousandth of them convert. And okay, you saw how long that took me. And it's been a while since I actually did it. It actually takes like 10, 15 seconds a piece. She bangs them out. And they're like, wow, this guy took some time. I mean, it's obviously that I cracked it. I didn't just, you know, but it's comprehensive. And we're doing it for Jorg and his group now. Jorg, how many folks have joined uh, IVD since we started doing that? And does it for him as well. And uh, um, so, sorry, I'm driving. That's why I have my videos off. But okay. um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, we've added probably uh, uh, 5,000 members at least. And how many of them do you happen to know have offered their email address? Uh, most of them, I would say. Most of them? Yes. You're telling me, and I can't believe that because I don't, that doesn't happen for me. I don't get 100% conversion of that. I get maybe 10%. You mean, well, I don't, I don't know what you mean. Offered their email address to join my email list? Yes. Yeah, I mean, well, okay. So there, I think I've added probably several thousand. So. Okay. Well, let's yeah, say yeah, some number greater than 10%. People who oh, ran, yeah. clicked on a button on LinkedIn are now in his email list. Yes. So repetitive stuff can really pay dividends. I've gone way off on a tangent. Uh, an email, an email from you, if they don't know who you are, will they open it? Well, they know who Jorg is now because they just interacted with him. You know, had nothing to do with it and took care of it all. When he writes his next email, it goes out to all these people and one small fraction of a fraction of them say yes and he lands tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of new business. On yeah, you. I mean, again, again, for consulting businesses uh, like ours, you know, you don't need 400 customers. You need one good customer with That's you it. win. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it's like, how much would you be willing to spend for one incremental customer V? I mean, if you land someone that's tens of thousands of dollars of profit, theoretically, you'd be willing to spend tens of thousands of dollars less a dollar to do it. But if I can do it even way cheaper than that by having a virtual assistant located in Abu Dhabi who nurtures me all day long. Okay, web traffic. How do they find your website? We can talk about search engine marketing and search engine optimization. Editorial coverage, excellent if you can get it. This one has matured since the last two and a half years, where um, I think COVID and layoffs and such, it's even harder to find journalists now since so much is self-published. Like I write my own stuff. I haven't spent a lot of time trying to get published in Mass Device or MDDI because I have my own following. Um, but if I tried to, it's like they're bombarded with ideas. You're pitching your story versus something else. Is it really that incremental? It's hard, but it's worth it if you can get it. Social media, key influencer marketing, networking, sure, but it's not scalable and I can't do it for you. Referral programs, print. I haven't had one print client in years. I haven't had one physical mail client in years. I haven't had one use TV, radio, outdoor, the yellow pages. Banner ads, yeah, right. Something else, what I forget. There are other little things on the margin, but basically they say, well, what do you recommend? And I say, well, which one gives you the most confidence? Because these are the choices, none guarantee success and none are easy. And I don't know what the hell else to tell you. Next, need a job distribution money, do this first. I get this question bi-weekly and they are, hey, you have this huge group. Surely, you know someone who will A, hire me, B, help me sell more of my products, C, give me money. And I say, well, let's start with supply and demand to hire you. Let's start with supply and demand to represent you. 
Let's talk about supply and demand of other investments I could make versus giving you money. And all of these require a degree of knowledge that I do not have the time or financial motivation or interest in learning. I mean, some random person writes me and says, hey, Joe, so if you know anyone who's hiring engineers, and I make a little thing here, it's like, so if you hear anything, is no way to ask for help getting a job. Because what am I gonna do? Hey, Elizabeth, I hear you're looking for a marketer. This guy told me that he's looking for a job in marketing. Well, what do you know about him? Well, I don't really, but okay, so why are you using your own brand equity to represent someone that you don't know? Or, hey, Joe, do you know anyone who has money? Well, I do know some people who have money. So I say, hey, you've got a VC. You want to invest in this thing? Well, what do you know about it? Well, I haven't done any due diligence myself. Are you investing? Well, I'm not investing. And if I thought you might, like, do you know how many people? So what this, again, I'll share this link with you, is these are the questions you need to ask. And I give you some ideas. Here's a job advice I gave someone. Like, he was like, do you know anyone who? And I recorded how to position himself. And uh, I have had a number of people watch this and say it inspired them to think differently. So you may want to do that as well. But basically, these all come down to supply and demand. Um, and that's the basis of just about, you know, everything. So uh, I'm going to see here if render two is on. Not at the moment. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause here. I do have these questions that you asked. Open rates, I answered that already. Freebies, we can talk about. Social, we will. And list brokers. Okay, uh, I'll talk about list brokers next. And you can just unmute yourselves, those who are panelists with me, and, and interject and ask a question. And I'll stop sharing for a little bit. Um, list brokers. The answer is um, any email that you send out is going to come from whom? This is the most important thing. Like I said, if Beth emails me, I'm gonna answer it. If someone I've never heard of sends out something about I've never heard of, then, you know. Um, so uh, how do you vet a list broker? You probably need to ask someone like me, hey, who do you trust? And I do have people that I've used and I trust. Um, but ultimately brokers, just like a house, brokering to sell your house, do you have a good house broker? I have someone that I used and successfully sold me my home and sold my home. Uh, are they a perfect fit for you? Mm -hmm. um, the house is the house. Similarly, the lists are the lists. You know, anyone can get me a, hist a list of hospital decision makers, VPs of quality and you know, safety. Yes. And so can any broker who deals in lists. Which one's the best broker? Well, who do you like? Because the the structure of their compensation is pretty much the same. And uh, I've been using Dave Nelson for 30 years. So I've started talking to Dave about his imminent death and who should succeed him when he expires, um, jokingly, my 66 year old friend. Um, and he's gonna you know, bequeath his book to someone, um, but he's my guy, that's it. So um, it's kind of a, a short answer. You might wanna say like, how do you, um, how do you know if the list is any good? Well, um, there are standards about ways to clean the list, but those are the lists from the magazine or from whomever compiled it. The broker is, if they're worth their salt, will know, you know how they get their leads and how engaged they are and things like that. They are expensive. You're gonna spend, it depends. If you just like said, give me hospital something, you're spending 40 cents a name right off the bat. Then you want to say, and I only want people who are vice presidents at 10 cents, 15 cents. And I want them in this department at 25 cents. Now you're spending 80 cents a name. And you're going to send out an email with this kind of response rate to this and that. You have to do the numbers. So that's the answer to um, that. Um, an alternative is build your own list, which is hard, but it's the best list you'll ever have because people have opted in to hear from you, which is going to be better than anything that you can buy or rent. Um, let's see, the other comment was freebies. So um, Maya, you were asking me, what should I give away? And my reply would be, what would be relevant? 
Now you said, well, we have this thing of 10 things you should know about such a thing. Um, a couple years back, it was 2017 actually, I was at a content marketing world, which was an exaggeration perhaps to say, but it was kind of worldview altering for me. It's a long story and the link is to my midlife marketing crisis. And you can read about my doubts about, you know, marketing and how good am I and things like, you know, what, what's going on. And um, what I, I remember there was somebody arguing that lead gating is dead. What is lead gating? Lead gating is give me your email address and then I'll give you a PDF. And I said, well, how is lead getting dead? I mean, how am I going to get your name if I don't, if you don't tell me? I mean, if you just read my stuff, how am I supposed to follow up with you? And the answer is disappointing to people who just want the names. And that is, if you're good and you said something relevant, they're going to want to give you their name. If it's just, I need to, you know, download something. Do you know how easy it is to put it out here? I'll show you, I'll bring my screen back on, share screen. Okay, email. Loading. Copy the clipboard. And I can just send an email from this email address or fill it in, you know, Let's see, I'll go to Maya's site, which by the way, so when I Google this, first it shows up in not my language. Probably not yeah. what you want to happen here in America. No, we way are way. working on updating the website, so okay. yeah. So, and I don't know if we, I don't think we even have the little pop-up right now for like, um, we usually have like a little pop-up box, you know, box that says, you know, get this report, you know. Okay, so right now we're office. in a foreign tongue. Help me out here. Where do I get this thing? <laughs> Okay, so if you go up, like to the top, there should be a way to change the, the language okay. to go uh, towards the top. There we go, U.S. flag. And do you have a way for me to download your paper? Um, I thought so. If I think if you go over to contact us, again, we are in the process of updating the website. So I know a guy yeah. who can help you with that, by the way. I'm just <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. So. so, and then if you go down a little bit, there are like news about laser therapy, then you can sign up for a newsletter. Now, right now, like we used to have a pop up box that would then, you know, give you the option to download that 10 things you should know before investing in a cold mm -hmm. laser device. Um, but I don't think it's, it's not hooked up at the moment for some reason. And like, I'm not the one that like does that stuff. So I don't really know where okay. to go in. And I just subscribed. And if you have some kind of automatic thank you, and here's your download. I'm gonna get it right here, I'm gonna open it, and I'm gonna delete this and never return to this ever again. So congratulations, you just got a new name that will never open, and you know, you're paying a penny a month for, for that. So, right. you know, if I wanna trick you and give you my fake phone number, my fake email, and still get the stuff, I'll get the stuff. Right. If it's valuable, then they're gonna be like, wow, these people really, these people deserve to be in my consideration set when it comes time for a, a laser thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my, my question, my comment about that. Engaging with relevant engaging. Okay, let's see what Spy has shared here. It's me. <laughs> v. Okay. Yeah. So I it right before, and then I yeah, the first time was good. E. Yeah. Give us a mnemonic so that we remember this. How do we remember this? It's me. Uh... It's V is me. It's v is me. Easy is V. I don't know. I'll have to work on it. Um, okay, you. This so, is your site. Yeah. Uh, and KOL led webinars are a great way to build your email lists. And that's the kind of thing that when you promote on social, people like to sign up for. Okay. So they fill out these forms and they give us a, basically a shit ton of information about themselves willingly. Language. So, I'm sorry. A poop ton. <laughs> Well, uh oh, that's your being in two places at once. I don't have two things open. No, no, uh, York showed up twice. I'm gonna lose him over here. Okay, thank you, York. Um, yeah, so for example, each of you gets an email reminding you about this broadcast. And if you're interested in the series, yeah, you 
pretty much going to give me the real thing. Otherwise, you're never going to get what you what you needed. So thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, uh, stop my share again. Now, uh, Z, um, you had a okay. You say you'd like to answer a question live. Um, let's oh. Okay, so I picked that by accident, but I, I think lead brokers are garbage in my, I mean, the ones that email you anyway, saying, would you buy, like to buy the list? Oh They're yeah, garbage. absolutely. Anytime I get anything like, you know, we would like to help medical Marcom or would you like to increase the business at medical device? It, it, it's, it's a form that is just so obvious and deletable. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's see, how did you, that was, open okay um terry davis please unmute yourself introduce yourself to the kind folks at home uh terry davis uh ceo of bridge tech medical uh, we do medical device data systems uh, basically uh devices that capture uh, the output of medical device data, capture it, make it clinically readable, parsable, and send it wherever it needs to go. EMRs, monitoring systems, uh, the cloud, or whatever. And uh, that's that's our, our niche. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. I'm going to share my screen because I just Googled your name. I wonder if you knew what would come up when I did this. Uh, it's good to check no, but thank you for making it public <laughs> What's that? Uh, i said no but thank you for making it public so we'll be i'll be surprised together okay um so is a medical device data system provider with a simple approach to capture and data, data and emr okay get all so it kind of trails off here you want to see what what you have there's a way to address this but let's see what our user experience is Get all the data you need. What differentiates this tech from other connectivity devices is that we acquire 100% of the medical device data. We let our customers. Okay, so um, I would say um, my takeaway right now, because I don't really understand your business, is oh, you have data, or you can capture my data and put it somewhere. Okay, um, I'm seeing stock photos, which aren't helping your case very much in terms of showing me credibility. Um, and I would not use this recessive color. This isn't supposed to be a, a design thing, um, but um, oh, but it is. <laughs> I can't help myself. Yeah, yeah. Stock yeah. dots are driving me nuts. And actually, Andre, I think it was Andre's site. No, nope. was it this one? Uh, Zvi. This drives me nuts. You've got oh, to yeah, we 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 I um, this website this page is disappearing in like two weeks. We okay. have a brand new. Uh, I did a whole audit, a whole user experience. For everyone say, don't center text if it's a paragraph. You want to center a headline, fine, but that's not the way we read. We read and we go back to the left hand side. We expect that. Don't make me kind of figure out where I'm going to read something. It's really bad. Yeah, I, I inherited a pretty crappy website. Uh, and I've only been with this company for six months and we're already, we're going to be launching all new product pages, new homepage within just a couple of weeks. Adequately defended. <laughs> we're, we're not hard. We're not hitting you. I just, I remember seeing that and I was like, oh, we got to talk about that. Yeah. yeah no, no. I, I just, Harry, I, thank yeah. you. We want to left justify stuff. Um, okay. So if you have news, have news, this looks like it was designed for four. You have one. I'm like, okay. Um, yeah, we're we're a pretty uh, niche focused market. This is mostly uh, the website is used to uh, talk with with uh, clients, and I mean, we do a lot of OEM work. And mm -hmm. so, mar marketing to the masses is you know the masses are not going to need our product, use exactly. our product. It's very very focused, and uh, so yeah, we we don't spend a lot of time on on the website and haven't. For a while, you know, it, it's it's not a tool that that we use a lot, except for uh, talking with some interested customers and pointing, drilling down with them to show them some uh, concepts. If 
if that's needed. Yep. In a conversation. It's fair enough. I would say Jeff, if I can interject rudely, I, actually, please, please. I'm hearing that breaks my heart a little bit. I, I, I definitely see a website as, a, as an engine for growth. Uh, in fact, the central engine from a digital perspective to draw top of funnel awareness and then sort of funnel people down, break it off into the personas, your relevant audience. I mean, the, especially if there's limited information about the kind of service you offer, you're actually in a position with content and SEO to be the only result or the most prominent result of anyone in the world searching for that. And when you run things, you run webinars, you want you know, everything should come through the website so people can explore what else is on there. I, I think that that approach is- It depends, depends, on, depends on who your market is. Well, I, I'm going to side with Zia yeah. and say that, you know, if I were to, you know, you're the best salesperson you're going to have for your company. And I'm quite confident that in a one to one conversation with you, everyone will walk away understanding what your value prop is. Mm -hmm. But a website, the, my philosophy is, is supposed to be a virtual 24 seven Terry Davis globally. Mm -hmm. So my question for Terry Davis would be, if I remember nothing else about you today, what should we remember? Please answer the question. We do uh, a, a very uh, focused special medical device uh, data retrieval primarily for ventilators. And so the, that, that's, that's basically the, the core market that we have. Why isn't the word ventilator anywhere I can see it here? So um, here is, um, I come back to the site. I guess I built it myself and we did this for, for Brent, um, but at the risk of patting myself uh, on the back, I just think that what we came to is just so clear that you don't have to even go further than this to know what he's selling and who it's for. Now, this video, 22 seconds long cost $12,000. It was worth it because it tells the story right off the bat. Another one is um, for Imacor. They had this video actually before I started working with them. But when I joined them, it took them about three hours to help me understand what this is exactly. And then I saw this and I was like, why don't you just Show me that. You put it down his throat, it goes into his, and then you can see the heart. I get it now. So powerful. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what is the equivalent for you where it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, if you are a blank, then what? So for these, you know, you can argue with whether you like this execution or not, I need to reduce recovery time complications and resources, so I do this. I need to avoid fluid overload during resuscitation. I need to see cardiac filling and function. I need to know if it's tamponade or desaturation. These are their needs and how we solve it. It's not, hey, we are this. It's in context of. So all the better if you can use some kind of if then mm -hmm. If you are a blank, if you are my child, I will love you. If you are an audience member, I will delight you. If you are a manufacturer, I will help you get better uh, quality and quantity of leads. That's the if then. Uh, and so I would I would offer that as, as a way to uh, consider it. Thank you for participating. Mm -hmm. Kevin Pullman, I know that you're still in development for your stuff. You probably don't have a website yet, um, but how would you fill in the if then? Um, I have to apologize. I was responding to a text a second ago. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to what you were saying. If you don't call attention, if you don't pay attention, then you're going to get called on in class and you're going to look stupid. Without doubt. <laughs> so, you know, we're just going to give you a pass and be like, hey, everyone, I'm sorry you know, on, on behalf of, of this gentleman. He just, he wasn't prepared. And uh, Kevin, you can just put your head down at the desk and, and we'll, we'll move on to someone else. You have a cap when I go stand in the corner? <laughs> no, no, you're supposed to bring your own. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, you want to talk or would you be also shamed like, like Kevin here? Uh, no, I'm, I'm happy to talk. So I, I have um, 
two different companies and we are about to launch our our um, electronic stethoscope with our little low hanging fruit of a flashlight. Do you so we remind me of the website address. Do you want me to call it up? No, because I don't think it exists yet. <laughs> oh, well, that's definitely the first step is get the domain name. No, I've got the domain. It's clinkmedical.com. So we do have that. Anyway, so um, thanks to Joe and his and all of you, this group, um, I have Jan Gates as our packaging expert. So she has developed, developed the package, which has taken months to develop for this little flashlight to go on the end of the stethoscope. And we're waiting for the cartons to arrive so that we can begin to sell them. But we do have a website. We do have all of that. And this particular product will be for all kinds of clinicians. And the question is, how do we, who, who do we go to first? Your question is how to prioritize who will find the most value in your product? Well, I mean, we, so I have a, a web developer who's taking care of all that. And uh, another person is uh, from your group, Gunter Vessels is... Can't go wrong with yep. So, and Michelle Lott did all of our regulatory. So, I am an MDG um, champion. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Anyway, so we're just about to launch. We hope it'll go in the next, um, you know, couple of weeks, three weeks. I hope that wasn't an important call. It wasn't. Don't tell us who it was because that'll be so dispiriting for that person. <laughs> I know. I know. Anyway. Um, so this is all wonderful. I continue to learn every single day that I'm on your program. I deeply yeah, appreciate it. I'm a huge champion. Well, I Thank appreciate you. it very much. If anyone else would like to come on camera and publicly praise me, you can do that now. <laughs> Rick Stockton, I know you've got nice things to say. Andre, anything? Nothing? You guys are on. Hey, Joe. Me. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Eckberg. Joe, at, at the risk of ripping this into the 21st century, uh, the discussion has been informative, but what about text? I've, I've seen some studies that show 66% of consumers want more text, 80% uh, of them want multiple messages a month from their trusted brand. Uh, isn't text a new frontier and search engine optimization a euphemism for he with the deepest pocket gets the most impressions? Um, you gave me so much to work with there. He, he with the know. most, the highest quality content, not the deepest pockets, but I think it's the, the SEO answer well he's well, talking about seo versus you gotta have money to buy word he's talking about sem can i just pay my way to the top of the results and yes you can but to, to zvi's point if when i get there i'm disappointed then you just wasted your money give us a reason ultimately look guys i know that you know marketers are slick and in my case you know handsome erudite uh charismatic uh the point is that we can bring you over to our house, but if you get in here and it stinks, you're like, I'm leaving. This is, I cannot handle this smell. You have to, you have to have a legitimate value proposition that people care about. I can bring people over, but after a while, I'm not going to use my brand to help bring people over to your crap house. You've got to have a good, you have to let me ask you. Let me ask you a pointed question. What do you think the impact of third-party browsing, uh, the option that Tim Cook is going to upset the Apple cart and enable people to turn that off, um, and Google eating all the cookies? Uh, I do not know to what up. you just said. Please start over. Third-party browsers, yes, are going to be um, turned off cookies? on millions of handhelds. Yes, once Apple enables them and it's occurring even as i speak here today uh so the re the reach that companies expect to have with digital advertising and a digital presence is about to be significantly limited going forward okay so uh for those of you who are uh, um, not uh, up on this um, google and others are looking to restore some degree of privacy where um, it's harder to track what you're doing online so that people are you know freer to feel comfortable with their browsers and the like. Um, I'll just say that um, there are there it's like um, I've been trading stocks lately and um, there are things that like 
break out and like it becomes obvious like oh my god everyone has to get on this thing it's so big and then eventually everyone's in and it crashes and it's like what am i supposed to do with this terrific loss what is this analogy saying the analogy is there was a time back in 2007 when i started blogging that it took almost nothing for me to be the top page one for everything i was number one medical device uh, marketing and medical device marketing strategy and Frankly, I haven't been at it every day because other things took over and I'm still pretty good legacy wise because of, you know, how many links and the whole formula. But right now, so often, if a client wants to talk about being at the top of page one, I say, really? Because think about Google as a human, the smartest human that has ever lived. And you approach this master of information and you say, excuse me, Google, who was the single best answer for the following question. And their reputation depends on them getting it right. There's no amount of trickery that's going to subvert that. The answer to your question is, yeah, it's going to get harder and it's going to get more expensive. And that's why you have to have a valid value proposition where either you believe that Joe Hage is a purveyor of truth and transparency and goodwill and will help you whether you pay him or not. I'm going to ask him a question. I know he knows people and he's willing to help or not. A friend used to uh, be a, a top salesperson for a GE product. I don't remember. I think it was ultrasound or something. And he said, my goal is not to sell a GE ultrasound product. My goal is to be the guy that the industry knows will never BS them. And if my competitor has a better product on a certain thing, I'm gonna tell you that. And I'm also choosing to work with GE because I believe that we have the best. So I can faithfully say, actually, when it comes to this versus that, this is the better thing and I'm credible. And you're like, well, that is important to me. So the answer is, and I believe this wholeheartedly and it's my entire business model really, is if I continue to give at some point, someone will say, actually, can I write you a check? And I gave that example earlier. I didn't know Peter in New Zealand. I didn't know that he had been following me for years and reading me every week until he said, what you said today resonated so much, I had to call you and please accept this check. And I was like, okay, I will. It's just being consistent and being top of mind and being relevant. And all the tracking and the cookies and all the other stuff, there are brands, John, that you swear by. There's nothing I'm going to do to sway you because their value prop makes sense for you. And it's not about their marketing. You'll seek them out. No, I think it's more like neophobia. I have a neophobia and I trust my brand. I trust the product. I don't want to try something new. But if, if something uh, fires up my prefrontal cortex, I'll, uh, I'll initiate some new buying behavior. That's right. Whatever that is. That's a great thing. I mean, I know you're, you're being you know, clever with your words and such, but think about that. If, if something fires up your prefrontal cortex, what has happened? Something new shook you and you were like, wow, what's this? You became curious about it. You started doing research. It wasn't because they started jamming this shit down your throat. Oh, no, they jammed it down my throat and I recognized an overt benefit and something that was dramatically different. And that mm -hmm. compelled me to overcome my neophobia and engage in new buying behavior. Now, whether that was a slick website, um, eh, I don't know. I think it's more like the overt benefit to me. I recognize the opportunity for overt benefit. The answer to your texting question is which brands, which brands text, text you today? It's me? Yes. Oh, I'm irrelevant. I, you know, uh, uh, I have I, some. I, and one of them is Walgreens. Walgreens texts okay, Kroger. Me to tell me that my prescription is ready. And whenever they do, I open it. Um, who Within else? Within 90 seconds. Me? Sorry? Within 90 seconds. Right. Um, but if Kraft Foods were to start, my former employer were to start telling me about a special on mac and cheese, I would unsubscribe so effing fast, it wouldn't even. But you subscribed to it in the first place to get it. So once again, to unsubscribe will be uh, an action that's not likely because- No, no, that's not true. So for example, I have a friend, Neil, that I subscribe to his newsletter and he's a friend and I wanna support him. But I wrote him back this week and I was like, Neil, you can't email me every day. I, I have to unsubscribe. And he wrote back, I understand. 
You know, what's interesting to me is there's a study of 2021 SMS marketing trends. Mm -hmm. 42% of the people that have opted in uh, with a trusted brand for a text, and this, this really staggers me, they want it four to six times a month. Almost half the people don't want less, fewer texts from their trusted it's, brands. It's, I, I, they I want would be very interested. I would say that's, B2, that's not B2B, that may be B2C. Yeah, oh, sure. B2B sure. Is not, I, not I the same yeah. thing, but, but it, you know, to Joe's earlier point, it, it also comes down to, to, you know, at the end of the day, what are they texting you with and what is the content? So, right. so I can tell you that I opt into a lot of stuff and on, on the, the, uh, the B2C space, um, they're the way they're harvesting your, your phone number. It's usually, you know, you get on the landing page and, you know, sign up for our uh, messaging and you get your, you know, 10 or 15% discount off your first order. Um, I can tell you that they're, you know, I, and I've done it quite a few times. And if I just went through my phone this morning, I'm deleting a lot of stuff. After I get that discount, it, you know, I'm, I, I, I tend to get seriously annoyed after like the, the 10th message. And I'm unsubscribing. And, 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 and when I go back to their landing page, I'll re-sign sign up next time I want to buy something for the next fifteen percent off. So you churn in and churn out. Yeah, yeah. And but but for me, you know, I've I've always worked in the B two B space in pretty technical products. You know, I I honestly can't imagine really anything in my space with the people that that I'm doing business with where I want to text. Or and, 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 and I can't imagine that any of my customers want, want to be texted by me. Well, so here's an example. I, I pretty much have all of your phone numbers. And I think, with few exceptions, if I were to if I were to text you, even if I'm expected and I said, hey, Joe H. or Kevin, I know a guy who has to talk to you, you would text me back and say, who is that? Because we have a relationship. Yes. And, you know, I'm not going to abuse texting you because I want to sell you something. Um, it, all of it, I mean... Marketing is trust. Plain and simple. I trust that you provide value and therefore I. When, There's no shortcut to it. Yeah. To uh, John's uh, uh, comment about texting, uh, when we transitioned in the pandemic, like around March and April, I implemented WhatsApp business. And it's basically, it's been great. And the lead generation, it's basically for lead generation. And people text us exactly with the question that they want to be addressed with. And you can also set up WhatsApp business uh, with an automatic response with them and obtain more data about the potential uh, customer. And uh, I've seen an increase in uh, time. Um, well, sorry, uh, a decrease in time to convert a lead. So basically we make uh, really fast sales uh, mm -hmm. through WhatsApp business. It's a great tool and you're not texting the customer, the customer is texting you. Um, and you can uh, have a conversation through WhatsApp business. You can even say, hey, I'm gonna call you through WhatsApp business. Uh, and it's great for international business as well. In Latin America is very popular. I've seen that in the US, they use more iPhone messaging, uh, but WhatsApp business in Latin America and other parts of the world is very popular. And you can even put your services there. I think that's a great idea. Now, you you, of course, are, are um, have a, a very international audience uh, where WhatsApp is, is more commonly used. Uh, I find I use WhatsApp exclusively for people out of the country um, who want to, in an expensive way, to connect with me. So I, I love this idea. Um, it reminds me of live chat, which, frankly, to me, is my number one preferred way to engage with a company. Because I have a question right now, and you can address it for me. And I, I don't even want to call because... I'm probably going to have some kind of like push one for this and two for that. And then I'm going to be on hold because my call is very important to them, as opposed to, you know, that, you know, you're third in line and then you can be like, and then even better if it's, if it's a website where I'm having trouble, then they can say, um, I'm going to call you now. And uh, I want you to go to like log me in one, two, three, or something like that. And they can mirror and see my site and they can say, you need to click here or let me take over control of the mouse and you're watching them fix your problem. This is. Yeah. And one of the first questions that we ask is like, thank you for contacting us. Uh, can I get your name, your uh, um, title and your email address? Like right from the start to open the conversation. Mm -hmm. So that gives us more information about the customer. 
and and they're willing to give it to you at that point because you're telling them something relevant. Yeah. Um, and it's free too. It's a so I, I have traditionally, I've been very bad and inconsistent here, but I've been traditionally very much a proponent of, um, of live chat. I just turned mine on um, where this, um, if I refresh, maybe it'll change to I'm online, I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Yeah. So in 15 seconds, um, I'm going to have a little pop up say, can I help you with anything? And oftentimes when this happens, someone will write me, are you a bot? And I'll reply, bleep, bloop. And they're like, ha ha. And we start talking. Thanks for visiting. I happen to be online now. Can I help you in any way? Find our most popular articles at this. Hey, Joe. Very handsome. Ah. Nice of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's just say a long term admirer. You get the idea. Um, but if someone had said, I saw you wrote about content marketing world, would you recommend it? And I'm responding right then. That's really powerful. I, I did a, a video um, just for fun. I could show you that um, back when Lucas was nine, um, it's a video of me talking and he shows up and he says, dad, and I'm like, honey, I'm doing something right now. And he says, dad, I need you right now. And I said, well, the analogy here is you spend a lot of money trying to get someone to come visit your site. And when they do, when they're on your site and they have a question, answer them. There's nothing better than someone right then, right there saying, Maya, can you tell me about this laser? Yeah, tell me your needs. You probably wanna look at this one and not that one. But the one-on-one -on -one thing and not be a bot, and there are bots that do it too, like have really common questions. For example, like I have my beef text thing where I throw out something. I can have some standard answers ready to go because everyone says, do you have a job for me? And I, here's what I write. Somebody writes me on LinkedIn, do you have a job for me? And I write, thank you for asking. Name of person. Actually, I get this question so often, I spend six hours on this article. I hope it inspires some ideas you can use. Please let me know if helpful. And then they go away, almost never to return. I spent under three seconds, I offered some value and I let them know, no, I'm not gonna look at your resume. And no, I'm not going to forward it to any of my friends. But please, I gave this a lot of thought. Here are some ideas that can help you. I've added value, and I get a fan for free, basically. Who knows when they see my name again? They're like, oh, I remember him. He gave me, I had someone um, not long ago say, you may not even remember me, but you gave me this answer once, and it changed my direction. And I'm like, that's just so rewarding. Did that person give me any money? No. The point here is they might have, and they might in the future. You never know. Goodwill. I mean, you can't buy it. You have to give it. So ultimately, I would say um, marketing comes down to trust and offering real value and not being shy about giving it away, even if you see no profit potential in a person. One of my favorites, I wrote an article called, how do you make any money doing this? Which somebody asked me, they're like, I see you writing all this stuff and giving all this free advice. How do you make any money doing this? And I loved the question because it baffled him. How could I possibly provide this much value and support my family? The answer is, I just need one of you to say, Joe, can I put you on retainer for my asking rate, which on the high end is 10 grand a month? Give me one or two of those and I got the expenses, honey. Just go out and buy the shoes you want. What is it with women and shoes? 
don't get me started. Um, I have like one pair. I just need footwear. Am I right? Same thing with glasses. I don't want to have to think what pair I'm going to wear. I've been wearing these for like five years. When they crack, I'll get new ones. Anyhow, you get the idea. Um, what better way to end than that, unless you have anything else? I invite you all, um, my premium folks, um, to 10X. It's May 10th through the 12th. And uh, Where? Yeah, that's excellent. So what I'm, I'm offering, and, and you can ping me or I'll, I'll send you a link. Um, if you pay before I update the website, I'm giving you a price that no one else will get. It's $13.95, including both workshops, whichever ones you want to go to. All expenses, um, you save $7.50 versus what it would be, uh, even at the early bird rate. Um, Send the link. Sorry? Send the link. Yes, I will. The link is going to be to my bank. You can just send money. <laughs> um, and the other thing, too, is... Um, I showed you. I showed you uh, Justin's uh, fast round. It's like a five-minute little thing. Um, I asked five hundred for those because there's a lot of editing and, and such involved, and it makes for a nice uh, thing for your website to explain your value prop, and we can work on it in advance. Uh, let's see. Thanks, terrific and Johnny. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, Rick, you want to share your screen? Sure, go ahead and see how you do that. There uh, we go. So you know how to. Um, Just down there on the share screen. There we go. I think you should be able to see it. Mm -hmm. what so the one on, well, I'll, I'll let you guess which one is the old one and which one is the new one. The new one being, you know, much better. Um, the Jack this, Design. Yeah, the, well, they're both the exact same company, both the exact same person. Uh, doing pretty much the same thing. And uh, this is the old one that I'm moving right now. And it's basically a list of things. And if you have enough patience and endurance, you mm -hmm. might get all the way to the bottom. And uh, this one is is really the company's basically me. So Joe's suggestion was sell yourself because you're the one who they're going to talk to. And then a very short intro, which looks a little weird. The text looks a little weird because because I've got it shrunk up so I can see both. Which means cases. that we need to talk because that shouldn't be happening. Oh, well, that's okay. I put, a, I put a sentence or two in there and I was actually editing it casually while we were on this thing. That was the other thing I, that, was the other thing that um, I got left over with. And that was that if, if I have something that changes, if I have a new project or something like that that I want to put in here, it's pretty easy to do because it's all done in WordPress and they showed me how it's done and I can go in there and pop in and change something or like or that your contact Rick button is bigger than your read more anyhow so yeah, yeah spend usually few, they spend a few they, complimentary they, moments with me so we can tidy you up a little bit yeah if I if I've got it if I've got it on regular if I've got it on regular scale and it's looking like this and it works on screen yeah. it works on different sizes it's screens. supposed to work no matter what scale it is that's the point of oh, mode, okay. which is the way to build things these days so the first page is pretty darned simple it's uh, you know, it's just it's just a few bullet points. It's a small summary. It's three different things that I do, three different services, and and a little graphic that uh, that for a lot of my clients really helps. They love to see a chart. Um, uh, Gabby Niederauer, uh, she really gave me some great feedback when I was starting this business. That was the one chart she got that was that communicated really well, and the little portfolio thing with the sampling of things, and recommendations. So that's as complicated as it gets. And it's got all these different things you can stop reading any, anywhere you want to. So I appreciate you sharing that. And, and I'll use it as an opportunity to um, tell you that I absolutely love my designer, Antonio. He is so good. And uh, I'm going to show you um, something that, that we're working on right now. Here, I'll stop sharing. This, uh, this is Michelle's site. Now, God bless her. Michelle is no offense to anyone on the call, one of my favorite clients ever because um, the degree with which she's accepted uh, my counsel and seen it work is unmatched. And her business has just done amazingly well since we started working together. I'm just so happy with it. Uh, this site I largely designed and you don't want to who designing your website, it's not bad. Um, and I'm happy with it and she's happy with it. and. We love her about section. 
where she talks about the five stages of regulatory grief. She says she gets a lot of feedback on this. Then we have R&D versus quality, her dogs fighting, time on her calendar and about her and uh, linked to her testimonials. And as nice as that is, we're redesigning it. Now, I'm not happy with this header just yet. We're not quite there, but this is, this is uh, Antonio's work. And look at the difference when you actually have someone who is a designer do this stuff. We're, we have an offer right here on the homepage. Here are the testimonials. I love these icons. It takes you to the industry she serves. Here's her blog. And um, I'm taking you to her about page. And this is the uh, kind of best example I can to say the difference between me trying to design something and someone who does this for a living. Look at the way he's representing the stages of grief. It just looks so much better. It makes such a, a different impression. Um, and the way that he, we're still changing this. And then he put in the offer again here uh, and about Michelle like this, weakness, anything barbecued and tequila, lots of tequila. So just, it's fun, but here you see it in a much broader way. Um, I have a, a pretty much, it, it's almost formulaic at this point for any website um, in general. Your logo's top left, everyone knows that. Your primary navigation is across the top, everyone knows that. In America, we read from left to right. So what's the most important thing? Second, third, fourth, fifth. Sometimes I'll have, you know, kind of the bookends are important too. So oftentimes I'll put something like free as a thing. So it's not, you know, everyone's gonna say, well, this is contact us. And I'm like, well, let's have one more thing, which is eye catching and you might typically. So here's your header. That's the picture and what your value prop is. What are you about? How can you get something right now? We think they're great. Here's a video pricing. This is the this is the layout we're doing for Samya's new site for uh, SNB. Um, I'll just show you quickly. Um, so this is his existing site. Which is fine. It's kind of a placeholder. And let me call up where we are right now. I just got this this morning. So um, come on. So I'm going to basically be looking at this with you. Always risky, but I'm a risk taker. Okay, so I am not sure about this image, but here is regulatory management made easy. SMB simplifies every aspect of regulatory management for medical device companies from your classification strategy to post market compliance reporting. I get it, that's fine. We're changing it to being about you. What if you could improve accuracy and expedite your submissions? Try it or learn more. Learn about it. Here are the benefits. Single source of truth, seamless document, testimonials, FAQs, and we haven't put in pricing yet, which is gonna be not unlike what we, um, let's see what I pricing, what I do for premium actually. Give you three choices, low, medium, high. Everyone chooses this pretty much. Some people, that's fine. Every once in a while, someone will write me an inquiry. Uh, FAQs, this is my uh, my lesson of the year. Every year I have like a thing that is like my aha. I think FAQs are perhaps the most valuable thing you can do on a website because these are questions you are asked. Answer them publicly. And people can just drop down and, and find out the thing that's interesting to them. There I am, I'm online, so I got pinged. Um, it's also great for SEO because these are questions that people are asking. Um, any questions about, we just did a quick view of some websites, anything? That was, that was a little, no, thanks Rick for, for sharing the work. Could you show that outline you had again, like where, like from, right now, what is it? I'm taking notes, I'm a note taker. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is all recorded, of course. Right. And you can take a screenshot. 
Ooh, good idea. Uh, let me. Oh, good idea. <laughs> and uh, I think we'll leave it there, yes. Next Thank week, you. I'll be calling in from New York City. Uh, two days ago was my mother's 90th birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Mom. Happy birthday. She knew you were yeah. um, so my sister's throwing a big party and as much as I like being the center of attention, holy hell, where did I learn it? My mother's like, everybody love me right now. It's gonna be a just, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I, we are having our call and next week, then Pat will be our host uh, calling in from India. And his topic is about testing or something. Uh, we just set this up. Let me see what we see of Annie, because she can do this for me. Update this. This is repetitive and learnable. Yep. Performance, quality, and safety testing. Pre qualifying your device per the World Health Organization. Laura's uh, joining us the following week, Brian and Leo on 60601. So that's the lineup for July. And uh, I've been bad. I usually have a good two or three months in advance. Um, send me your recommendations, or if you want to be a speaker, teach something new. And uh, we'll keep our little party going. This is episode, I think, 84. Um, outstanding. Outstanding. And it's the highlight of my week, too. So thanks for spending some time with me and enjoying coffee with me. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July for those who celebrate. And uh, this is Joe Hage signing off for Joe Hage Enterprises. Make it a great week, everybody. Thanks, Joe. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.